So, I mean, here's the situation. Bunny has dropped two games already here. This puts Sue in a really comfortable spot. Now, the biggest mistake that pro gamers can make here is to get too complacent and too comfortable and end up playing a little too relaxed. Bunny still has a chance to bring this back into his favor. Sue cannot afford to let his guard down. Let me tell you something. If Sue wants that 4-0 victory, if he wants to just completely shut out Bunny, don't drop your guard. Keep it up and be ready for the unexpected. Because let me tell you something. Bunny, and we've already seen this from him before, we haven't seen a single 2-1-1 from him yet. This means Bunny understands that the way to catch his opponent off guard is to be unpredictable. Is to try to do build orders. Now, granted, we've we've seen we've seen through Dash Reaper, Reaper before, and we've also seen the help at uh, Marine Push before, and we've seen players do that before. But it's definitely those are the things that you have to do. You have to throw in builds here and there and try to catch your opponent off guard. If you do too many things that are too standard, if you do too many things that are in the meta right now, your opponent knows exactly what you're doing. They know how to respond. Yeah, Bunny is just going to want to mix it up as much as he can. And speaking of mixing up as much as he can, let's jump into the game. Oh, you know what, Felipe? Uh, I love this map. It is a bizarre... Oh, now, hold on. Now, I don't actually like myself, but I just love the texture and the fact that we're underwater. I love that about Abyssal Reef. Oh, it's a beautiful map. I love the aesthetic of it. It's a great map for us to introduce our players. Starting in the top left-hand corner of Abyssal Reef, LE, we have the current underdog in this series. Down 0-2, to two, he is Bunny! And his opponent in the red trunks. It is going to be the Zerg player who so hasn't shown any weakness whatsoever in this matchup. It is going to be Sue. Uh, All right, okay. so, you know, considering that the map here is uh, Abyssal Reef, um, you know, seeing as how you are a Zerg, what do you think so far about Sue's play? Do you think it's just it's just really solid? There's there's no openings or weaknesses from coming from Sue at all right now? I mean, I wouldn't say that he's absolutely no weaknesses, but he has just been playing very good. As I said, so far this game, he has just been the king of counterattacks. He has just gotten the very perfect opportunity, known exactly where to go in, and just taken the victory right there, pretty much, with both of his counterattacks. Yeah, and I think that's the thing about Sue is he's played so many games that he understands not to overreact, not to panic in situations that don't require it, and react as calmly and as professionally as possible. And that's exactly what Sue's been doing. He did it in Cactus Valley. He didn't. He didn't overreact to the Hellbat Marine pressure, and he didn't do it to the Three Rash Reaper either. Oh, we got two two links here in the Natural of Bunny. Getting a little cheeky. They're trying to stop that uh, command center, but Bunny is not going to let that happen. Marine just barely surviving there with ten health, and he is going to kill those links and maybe even an Overlord. Oh man, this, if this Marine kills off two links and an Overlord, then Bunny has has done as much as possible he could have done with the 50 minerals that he spent on getting this marine. I mean, that is just 50 minerals well spent. And another Reaper coming in here, not another Reaper, but just a Reaper, is going to get one of those Zerglings with that Reaper grenade, but they are going to catch him off guard and finish it off there. Now, it looks like we are going to see more of what we saw in that first Cactus Valley game. We are seeing these Hellions being reactored out we're seeing cloak banshees on the way as well yeah no this is a this is very similar to what bunny was pulling off on cactus valley but it is not exactly the same on cactus valley bunny was pumping out reacted marines first and then switched over his factory and this one he only grabbed one marine and is pumping out reactor reactive hellions this is uh, very reminiscent of the builds that terran players like to do in uh wings of liberty and heart of the swarm you pump out uh you know, pop out reactor Hellions and then go for a Cloak Banshee pressure timing, which is, you know, we haven't seen that build uh, often. It's, it's kind of been, kind of moved out since the meta has shifted, but I, I'm glad to see it come back because Sue, Sue may not even expect it. Little Zergling run by in here, forcing that meta back to unload and drop those Hellions. 
the Zergling's are doing way too much. Are they gonna get a Hellion? Oh, just four Zerglings running to the base. Did end up killing off one of those Hellions. And he's gonna run in, get a tiny bit of scouting information, and also delay that drop. Uh, that was a bit of a, a bit of a miss micro there from Bunny. He had to back ready to just wasn't it, able to get it in time. He almost lost another S or not another SCV, another Hellion there to those or to that queen at his base. He's got a lot of Hellions in the red here, but he also does have that armory, so he can switch them into Hellbats and. Um, heal them with that medevac, but more and more Zerglings just running into this base. It is just a couple just trying to get some scouting done, just trying to delay this uh, Hellions as long as possible for his roaches to come out. Yeah, so the interesting thing to note here is we need to see if Sue is ready for the Coke Banshee follow up. We do see Sport Crawler, so yes, he is ready for it, but knowing Bunny, if he micros well, he's gonna. Oh wait, we got drones here! They're Hellions! Eight drones roasted by those Hellions, and the Hellions are gonna get out alive. That one queen was not enough to uh, kill all of those Hellions or that medevac. He's gonna try and do a little bit more pressure here. Just gonna pull them off the line for a little bit there, though, at the third base. Yeah, if you notice what, what Bunny was trying to do was that with that starport, as soon as it finished, he added a tech lab, but he go for Banshee right away, he got a meta back out, and that was so that he could apply multi-prong aggression. Attack from Hellions on one side and attack with Cloak Banshees from another. This is a great move by Bunny, it's exactly what you need to do, because if you attack with just Banshees, it's way too easy for Zerg to hold with the Spore Crawlers and the Queens that they have. So for Bunny, he made as much use as possible with that medevac and four Hellions as possible. So this was a great move here. Now we do have the Cloak Banshees flying in here, but Overseers are already out for our Zerg player, so at most, what Bunny can do is he can try to hit drones and stay out of the Queen's range as much as possible. Ooh, and one of those Banshees is gonna go down. That harassment has just been shut off. That ain't gonna happen. Yeah, it just, it seems here that Bunny is very busy trying to make sure he keeps up his macro at home. But he kind of lost track of his Banshee there. Losing that Banshee uh, hurts him a lot because two, with only one Banshee now, he has... Uh, much less impact when he goes for the harass. He has much less firepower, and you know, with those banshees, he could have scanned and cleared out a lot of creep and stuff. But now that he only has one banshee, he, he needs to retreat and try to do something else. And he is going to try to do something else. A couple of cyclones being dropped in here. Double cyclone drop. Medivac going very low in health, and going to just have to hover around here and not going to be able to go in after that. Yeah, Bunny is definitely going to have to retreat. Aren't going to be able to do much, and that medevac is so low on health. Now, we do see 5 fact follow-up Bunny, which means he is going uh, for a mech build, and it works really well on Abyssal Reef. The, the expansions are so close to each other that it's very easy to mech on this on this map. You can you can grab your fourth base, and you can grab a fifth base. You, they're right next to each other. Mech is a great choice on this map. I'm glad to see Bunny doing it. He realizes that so far his first two games where he went bio wasn't working out so well, so he's going to switch it up here. He's going to try to go for a different strategy. He's going to try to catch his opponent as much as possible. Now for Sue, let, let me get, let me make one thing clear. This guy, he's not new against Mech. He knows exactly what to do against Mech as well. I and mean, we've seen him do this before. We've seen him respond very, very properly against Mech. He's already got... A fourth base coming up here. He's saturating them as much as possible. He's got a good uh, late game army composition coming up soon. There is a window opportunity here, a small window for Bunny to go in and attack with his mech army. But if that passes, then Sue is going to have a very scary army ready to handle the mech. And S Bunny is just going to try and keep up these drops with that medevac. A couple of hellbats loaded into it, but Sue is just r right on top of it. He is going to clear up a couple of creep tumors here, but it is not going to get much done at all, I don't think. But here is the army, like you said, a lot of Hellions, huge Hellion army moving across here with some upgrades already. Their blue flame about to finish up, going to clear up some creep here and move right on top of Sue, but Sue is going to force him back for a little bit. Yeah, for Bunny right now, he's clear. He doesn't want to go. Just yet, he wants to use his health to clear out as much creep as possible. 
so that when he does move out, he's going to have less creep to deal with. Now, one thing I would like to see here for Bunny is I would like, I would have liked to see some ravens from him. He already had the tech lab on his starport to begin with. A raven would have been great here. It helps him clear out the creep tumors. It helps him drop down point defense drones. It helps him drop down the auto turrets to, help, to, to, to harass against the drones. A raven would have been a great decision. It delays the reactor fighting just a little bit, but a raven would have helped down the a lot. Alright, it looks like the attack is coming. We have the blue flame hellbat and a Heck of a lot of siege tanks coming in here. Gonna bust down these rocks. Gonna move right into Sue's base. Yeah, so we're gonna have a battle here very soon, and Sue. Does His vipers have just come out in the nick of time, but let's see if these blinding counts are gonna be done in, in time. He's gonna move right on top. Sue does have a lot of army, but there are a lot of tanks as well. Hammering on this, a lot of those hellbats are going down. Tanks. Not all of them are even siege up yet, but there are so many of them, it looks like most of Sue's army is going to get driven off for now. Vikings landing there as well, He's gonna try and just do as much damage as he can here. This is terrible for Sue, because this high ground position for Bonnie is so good. He can siege up right here, cancel the 5th base, and get the 4th base drones as well. But the roaches are right on top of this, are going to get a couple of tanks there. There are a lot of roaches closing in very close. It looks like they are going to push out through a lot of this. A lot of them dying as well, though. Oh, that was a bit of a mistake here from Bunny. He should not have unseized all his tanks. Like, gave Stu an opportunity to run his roaches in and surround the tanks. And remember, uh, right there, there was still enough creep for Sue to, to for his roaches to run in quick enough to get a surround on the tanks. So Bunny should have uh, advanced little by little instead of unseating all his tanks. And once Bunny got a little impatient there, but it's okay. He's still got reinforcements on the way. He's trying to stay off creep as much as possible, which is the right thing to do here. He needs to make sure he doesn't lose any more. Oh! The high ground attack going in there. Medivac moving in right at the last second, allowing those tanks to fire upon those hydras and roaches, though. Yeah, that was uh, a little a little unfortunate here for Bunny because he he doesn't have Vikings positioned so that he can get the high ground vision. But do you see this uh, aggressive sensor tower? This is beautiful. This is exactly what you need to do when you're in this position. When you're on the low ground position and you don't know if your opponent has units on the high ground or not, you put up a sensor tower so that you can continue this this mech contain that you've got going on and continue to apply pressure. When Bonnie takes control of mi the middle area, this very much limits Sue in what he can do. Sue does not have an air army. He only has a ground army because he needs to continue to move across the map at a regular pace. And with Bunny controlling the middle, this is going to be very dangerous to see if he's not careful. And Bunny is just keeping up the counterattack. Kelly is moving in. I think we saw some Hellbat drop a little bit earlier there. He is just going to not let up the aggression. Bunny does not want to give this game away. Yeah, so the situation here for Sue is that he needs to face and get enough gas so that he... He's going to want those swarm hosts that can handle against... He's going to need a good number of Vikings for blinding. Later on, he's going to want Broodlords. Broodlords and Swarm Hosts, free units, those are the compositions you want against mech. But Kent does soon have the economy, he does not at the moment. Who have just going down on that one tank, just picking it off. But it looks like there isn't going to be much engagement, um, not yet anyway. Yeah, so this, I mean... He's his army. I mean, Bonnie is just doing a great job. He's moving in at the exact time that he to, killing off Sue before he can get that scary composition now and sue here realizing he can't take this army head on go and go around and hit the fourth base where bunny's vulnerable <laughs> absolutely <laughs> sue the king of counterattacks is he gonna make it happen again moving in here while his force base is sieged up by these tanks and these hellbats a yeah, big but... roach cluster moving in there and there is still a little bit left to defend but there are so many tanks there two uh SCVs going down here and this uh, attack is doing very well, but this uh, high ground here allowing Bunny to fire on Sue's base. They're killing off 10 drones and that hatchery. Both players supply blocked at the moment. Of course, Sue is maxed out on his supply anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much for him. Yeah, but I mean, this is exactly what I was talking about. 
so well on this bat. Bunny lifted off his fourth base, but you saw how he already had, you know, a third base established, and that third base was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, he lifted off his third base, but the fourth base was a planetary fortress. The bases are so close together, he hardly lost any mind time, even though he cheated his SCDs. And with the high ground advantage that Bunny has, he hit both the fourth base and the fifth base at the same time. Yes, Sue gonna move right in here on this army, gonna try and get a couple of tanks, gonna try and not move into the main tank line there, but no, he is going to push up, and those tanks are going to hammer on him, but he is going to get some decent damage on army supplies, still staying almost dead even in this game, is what is just so remarkable about this game. But Sue is slowly running out time if he is not able to protect his bases from dying he is going to lose this game on abyssal reef as you can see borny is moving around the map and doing a beautiful job of positioning his tanks and trying to get the high ground advantage most possible another battle's gonna come here Ooh, these roaches moving in here the tanks are not quite sieged up are they gonna be able to get on top of that army no the siege tanks are going to get a chance to do a couple of first battles going down there the tanks are gonna die but Bunny is still just retaining this hole right here. I mean, if you look at the supply right now, we have 136 to 141. They're they're pretty much dead even, but if Terran is on the same number of bases as Zerg is, it is just game over. There's no way for Zerg to get the economy they need to be able to handle against the mech composition. And let me tell you something right now. Bunny is establishing his fifth base, and Sue is about to lose his fourth because he just doesn't have a positional advantage. He is going to try and move in these uh, roaches, hydras, queens, everything moving in here. But there are so many tanks on the high ground. It looks like most of them are going to go down. But wait, he's having to land his vikings. It looks like Sue might actually break this uh, siege tank line here. More tanks trying to move in as reinforcements. But it looks like Sue has just enough to move in here. Sue finally taking a lead in this army supply. And this actually gives Sue a chance to get back in this the advantage now because Bunny, um, he, his tanks just didn't arrive there in time. If Sue had waited just five more seconds, those extra tanks would have arrived and Bunny would not have lost his positional advantage. He would not have lost his hold here. But now that Sue has broken it, Bunny's going to have to retreat, play a little defensive now. He's lost a lot of heavy and expensive mech, mech units. So he's going to have to back off and try to rebuild that army he lost. So Bunny can't go out and attack right now. He needs to get another strong army out. He needs to play defensively, maybe run some Hellions around, try to get some, do some help at drops here and there, but he absolutely cannot move out with the main force, not when he no longer has the middle control anymore. This means that Sue has a chance to run around the map and try to establish map control of his own, which is exactly what he should do and play as defensively as possible so that he doesn't lose any drones to Hellions. And Sue is continuing to just keep up a little bit of pressure here. He was sending a clump of roaches down that attack pass of Bunny. But Bunny is also continuing to keep up the pressure as well. Uh, he has a few clumps of Hellions that he just sends in every once in a while. Just to keep the pressure on. Just to keep Sue on his toes. And that's exactly what you need to do. Is Hellion and very easy to get out with the reactor factor. A try. To, to kill drones and try to spend these Hellions in the most efficient way possible. But, you know, this is this is kind of what I was talking about, is that this is what Bunny needs to do. He needs to siege up his tanks, he needs to set up sensor towers, he needs to play as defensively as possible, but he needs to keep applying pressure and not allow Sue to get a very scary late game army competition out, which he, I'll be honest, Sue is very close to getting that done. He's on five, he's on, th well, okay, so his main base is natural and his third base are mined out, but he does he, ha he does have five bases up and running, he has a sick hatchery on the way. Once he's got that economy he needs, he's going to get out of very scary late game army competition and prevent Bunny from being able to apply any more pressure. And that is exactly what he needs to do. He is still ahead in the army supply here. He's still ahead in the army supply. He's ahead in the overall supply as well. Bunny... The, Bunny's tank line just got broken there, and he just wasn't able to keep up the pressure that he had previously. Yeah, he Bunny's... Is continuing to send these Hellions in, though. A big clump of Hellions moving in here, gonna try and clear the free, gonna try and keep the pressure on, but looks like Sue is right on top of it, sending in to try and clean it up, and Bunny is gonna be forced on out of there. If you notice what Bunny is doing right now, get max up to all close to around 200, 200 again, before he tries to move out. 
which is exactly what you need to do when you're going to mech army composition. If you don't have the necessary amount of tanks, you cannot move out and apply pressure. But now we see that both players are getting to that point where they, they know that a battle is coming up. They know that a big battle is about to come up, and it's going to be a question of whether or not Bunny can establish his tanks fast enough in time, or if Sue gets that perfect concave surround that allows Zerg players to destroy mech attacks. And it looks like Sue's army is getting very big. He is very close to maxed out. He's adding on an Ultralisk Cavern as well. Is he going to start trading out some of these roaches? Going to try and get up to this higher tech unit, do you think? Yeah, no, that's exactly what Sue is going to do. Exactly right now, moving in, but the tanks are seeped up and he is going to be forced back. He's going to want to get out Ultras. He's going to want to get out the care base upgrade as fast as possible. Now, one good thing that I'm seeing Bunny is that he's pumping out reactive Vikings constantly, even though Sue doesn't have a, 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 a oh, oh, wait, Hellions here at the base. Getting a lot of drones here, but there are a good number of spines, good number of roaches here to clean this up. Actually, 10 drones are going to fall there. For a few Hellions in return, just keeping up the pressure, Bunny is. Felipe, if you check out the units lost at Sue has lost a total of 53 drones this game, compared to the 8 SCVs of Bunny. Very good economic harass by Bunny. This is actually topping, I mean, admittedly it wasn't in one fell swoop like last game, but it is topping the number of uh, SCVs uh, Sue killed last game. Yeah, so earlier on what I was uh, trying to uh, Bunny keeps pumping out reactor valiant Vikings even though he doesn't really have much of an air to deal with, and that's because he doesn't want to get caught off guard by a Broodlord transition all of a sudden. So this is a great move from Bunny. Oh, but he's going to come in here and we're going to have a battle! Ooh, we are seeing a little bit of a clash here. Tanks are sieged up though, and it looks like Bunny is going to continue the march on in here. Some tanks actually moving down to the low ground. Maybe just gonna try and get that trench position. Maybe try and siege up this base as well from multiple angles with these tanks. But Sue is also just having a little roach counterattack in there, keeping up the pressure. But it looks like this base is currently rendered inoperable by those tanks. Yeah, and this is actually the situation where. Oh, hold on a minute! Ooh, Ultras moving in, but the Ultras do not have their kindness planning yet. They do not have enough armor where they are going to be absolutely by this, but blinding cloud on a couple of those tanks is going to allow these hydras to move in and kill off a good chunk of them. Some of those vikings being forced to land, try and fend off those ultralists, but it looks like Bunny is going to hold this off for now. Sue now very far behind the supply. Yeah, and I actually think that as long as you fight for and not get caught off guard, he will very easily win this game. I mean, he just killed Sue's base for like the third time already in this map and Sue's running out of money. He has no gas left. He can't get out those expensive units like can handle against this mech army and now Bonnie is just in a great position to win and you can see Bonnie establishing an expansion here at 12 o'clock and this is the game over. I would, I mean, I would be pretty sure about that but I don't know if Sue can do crazy things. I don't think he will though here because it looks like his armies are going to Flash here, and Bunny just has too much for Sue. Most of Sue's stuff going down, and GG, game number three goes to Dust Bunny. And now, Felipe, now you can say the score two one. You got the vi you got the one win you want. You got it, man. All right, the score is indeed one one. It looks like we have our commercial functioning this time, so we are going to go into a quick commercial break right here. Be sure to stay tuned for more StarCraft after the break. I'm Shaft, the owner of Polygon Gaming, and I believe in a tip-based economy where the hardest working people get rewarded for their effort. I've held a number of jobs, and while there's nothing quite like that adrenaline rush of being a line cook, working the trenches as a waiter or delivery driver is where you really get rewards for customer interaction. And as long as everybody works hard, there's enough to go around for everyone. This applies to StarCraft as well as kitchens. And that's why Macharino is the future of esports. Macharino allows organizers to crowdsource their events events, luring players with the temptation of luscious prize pools guaranteed by the most dedicated viewers. Do you think one organization does a really good job, or is your favorite player squaring off in the match of the century? It doesn't matter. Now you can support it either way. 
Matcharino makes it easy to distribute prize pools after an event is over with a flexible donation system that opens many doors for creative organizers. With a flexible system unrivaled by competitors, Matcharino is just what this scene needed. Some say StarCraft II is a dead game, but many others, just like you, every day are putting their money where their mouth is, and Matcharino is the platform they're using to do it. Matcharino is single-handedly breathing life back into this game. Help esports grow because StarCraft lives.